Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel Dentistry to the Point. This is Dr. Dromil Manik. So previously we have discussed two topics regarding the cardiovascular system from the subject of general medicine that is acute heart failure or heart failure and then also we have discussed acute rheumatic fever. So these are the two topics which we have discussed previously. We will move on to a third topic that is infective endocarditis. This is also an important topic in regard to the examinations various short note or long answers are asked on this question. So if you have not watched the videos on heart failure and acute rheumatic fever, I would suggest you guys to watch that videos also. So starting with infective endocarditis, kya hai infective endocarditis? It is a microbial infection of endocardial surface, jo bhi heart ki inner surface hai, the endocardium. Uska agar ki, kisi area mein microbial infection ho jata hai, then it can lead to infective endocarditis. Now mostly where it is going to occur, it is going to occur at the site of endocardial damage. Jaha bhi endocardial mein damage hoga, there the microorganisms are going to reach through blood and colonize and form their colonies over there and then show their virulent effects. Secondly, in normal heart, agar infective endocarditis hoga, then it will be by Staphylococcus aureus which is very virulent and aggressive organism. So it is also going to enter through blood. There are various routes. We'll discuss about it in the further part of the lecture. Then intravenous drug abusers. Jo bhi intravenous drug abusers hote, they are mainly going to get affected by the tricuspid valves. There are also various congenital or acquired defects like ventricular septal defect, mitral regurgitation or aortic regurgitation. These are mainly due to high pressure jet of the blood that is high pressure or the flow of the blood is in high pressure which current these defects are going to occur which are present congenitally or they can be acquired in future life also so these conditions are also vulnerable to infective endocarditis matlab in simple the person with aortic regurgitation or mitral regurgitation or ventricular septal defect may also be affected by infective endocarditis. I hope so this much is clear definition and a bit introduction about the condition. Then rickettsia, chlamydia and fungus are the three main organisms which are responsible for the occurrence. There are also various other organisms but these are the main organisms. Now starting with the pathophysiology of how is this going to occur then there is always going to be pre-existing cardiac lesion. Sabse pehle kya hoga? Pre-existing cardiac lesion ho na? Zaruri hai. Due to that there will be endothelium damage or damage to the endocardial surface of the heart. Uske karan kya hoga? At that site, at the site of endocardial damage there will be aggregation of platelets and fibrin. It is but obvious that platelets and fibrin are going to get accumulated. So there the bacteria and the various organisms get chance to accumulate over that area. Is condition ke baad kya hoga? After the platelet and fibrin deposits have accumulated, then the bacteria are going to come over that site and get adhered to that position at the site of endothelium or endocardial damage. So, ek baar the bacteria aake adhered ho gaye us jagah pe, then they are going to start forming their colonies. Once they replicate and start their forming their colonies, they are going to create small numerous amount of vegetations which may cause local destruction effects or it may also get uh, dislodged in the form of emboli or it may also get as focal infection or it may also cause host response complication. Kya kya ho sakta hai? Local destruction effects bhi karwa sakta hai. Embolization bhi that is, is vegetation ka yahan se detach ho ke kahi aur embolus ke form mein bhi convert ho sakta hai. Focal infection, matlab usi jaga pe infection bhi ho sakta hai aur host response complication bhi so this is a basic introduction regarding infective endocarditis. Next we'll move on to the various microorganisms which are responsible then clinical features, investigation and treatment of this condition. So after discussing about the introduction and pathophysiology of infective endocarditis, next we are going to discuss about the various microorganisms and how do they enter the endocardium that is 
थ्रू द ब्लड स्ट्रीम देखो अगर कोई भी माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म को एंडोकार्डियम या कोई भी प्रोस्थेटिक वाल्व या कोई प्रोस्थेटिक मटीरियल तक पहुंचना है then it has to enter compulsory the blood stream that is must thing okay just keep this in mind so there are two types of uh, two groups of microorganisms i should say which are the most common responsible for the occurrence of infective endocarditis that is streptococcus viridiens and staphylococcus group of organisms ye to jo ye jo do organisms hai na they are going to cause 75% of total cases of infective endocarditis So firstly we will discuss about the streptococci viridiens so there are two microorganisms that is streptococcus mites and streptococcus sanguis these two microorganisms kya hai ye these are the common commensals of upper respiratory tract so they are they are going to easily enter the blood stream ab ye blood stream mein kaise enter karenge ya to chewing food by brushing or any dental treatment if any of this is done and there is contact of this microorganism in blood then they may enter the blood stream and cause infective endocarditis next e fecalis e fecium or streptococcus bovis these are the another three microorganisms which can again enter the blood stream through bowel or urinary tract yahan se ye do organisms teen organisms enter kar sakte hai kahan se bowel se aur urinary tract so we discuss about s mites s sanguis e fecalis e fecium and streptococcus bovis there are also two other groups of streptococci that is streptococcus pneumoniae and pneumoniae and streptococcus pyogenes so these two are also causing infective endocarditis so this we end with the streptococcus group then we have staphylococcus group which are the most common or most responsible i should say for infective endocarditis first it was considered that streptococcus are most common but now staphylococcus has taken the control and become the most common causative organism for infective endocarditis so they can enter to the into the blood stream by skin infection by abscesses by vascular abscess by jaise ki koi dental treatment ya kuch kara to do vascular blood flow mein bhi enter kar sakta hai through intravenous drug abuse they can enter so staphylococcus aureus can enter by these routes now next we have hasek group of organism h a c e k to ye jo hasek group of organism se we have pneumonic also you can call as hasek group also so these contains five organisms which are responsible for infective endocarditis these are very much virulent organisms they are resistant to penicillin also so firstly h for hemophilus a for actinobacillus actinomycetic comitans c for cardiobacterium hominis e for echinella species and k for kinjela species so these are the hasek group of organisms next discussing about the post operative endocarditis so just consider a patient who has undergone cardiac surgery and he has placed a prosthetic valve or any other prosthetic material so the after the completion of surgery there are going to be two organisms which are going to be the common commensals after the surgery at the area at the surgical area so these are the two organisms that is staphylococcus epidermidis and staphylococcus lugdunensis these two organisms are the common commensals and they are coagulous negative organisms i should say they are coagulous negative they show coagulous test negative the ye do jo organisms hai usme se this the first one staphylococcus epidermidis jo hai it is going to be present is, uh, as a most common commensal in the skin jo bhi skin ki layer hogi usme most common commensal kaun sa hoga staphylococcus epidermidis so even these two organisms can cause infective endocarditis after any surgery or after any cardiac surgery there are also various other organisms like coxella bruneti brucella candida albicans or aspergillus these organisms are also responsible for the occurrence of infective endocarditis so this was about the microorganisms which are responsible for the occurrence of infective endocarditis next we'll discuss about the clinical features investigation and treatment of this condition
So next moving on to the discussion of clinical features of infective endocarditis. So first we will start with the eyes. Now eyes are going to show three signs. Firstly subconjunctival hemorrhage that is bleeding beneath the conjunctiva. Then you see rot spots. Now what are these rot spots? There is bleeding occurring in retina and due to this bleeding there are white spots created in the center of this bleeding and these white spots are known as rot spots. Then petechial hemorrhage are also seen. Now what are this petechial hemorrhage? They are small reddish purple dots or bleeding points which you can see on the mucous membrane and also on the fund. You can see small small bleeding points like this. Small reddish purple bleeding points are seen on the mucous membrane and also on the fund. Mucous membrane of what? Of oral cavity. Subconjunctival hemorrhage is also seen that is bleeding beneath the Conjunctiva. Then regarding the central nervous system, we have cerebral emboli in 15% of cases. 15% case we can see cerebral emboli. Embolus formation is seen next. Regarding the cardiovascular system, you have varying murmurs you can hear. That is cardiac murmur. You can hear that. Conduction disorders and cardiac failure are the most common signs regarding the infective. Endocarditis. Then regarding spleen, 30 to 40 percent of cases are going to show splenomegaly. That is increase in the size of spleen. Then Osler's node. Now Osler's node. What are they? These are again reddish purple lumps which are felt in the fingers. At the tips of the fingers, what will happen? Reddish purple lumps feel. What will happen? Now that lumps are known as Osler's node. These are seen in 5 percent of cases. Hematuria. That is. Bleeding in the urine blood loss or RBC blood loss in urine you can say that is hematuria. Then petechial rash. This is a petechial hemorrhage. The usse saaf se petechial rash. You can see the loss of peripheral pulses. Then uske karan kya hoga? There will not be enough blood supply to the peripheral parts of the body like fingers and the toes. So that will lead to gangrene of finger and the So, so loss of peripheral pulses is due to emboli. That is, emboli are going to lodge in between, and that are not going to allow the blood to reach the finger tips and the toes. So, due to that, there will be gangrene. Also, then there will be splinter hemorrhage. Now, what is this splinter hemorrhage? This is bleeding seen beneath the nails. Now, this is a straight reddish purple line seen in the nails due to bleeding occurring in the Capillaries which are situated beneath the nails. जो भी microvascular capillaries present है nails के नीचे उनमें bleeding होगी. This is due to emboli. The emboli which are getting lost in the capillaries, they are going to damage that capillaries and result in splinter hemorrhage. Then digital clubbing, you guys. I hope you guys know what is clubbing. Then systemic emboli are also seen. We have discussed about this. Again, we reach splenomegaly, which is seen in 30 to 40 percent of Cases. So these are the systemic manifestation of infective endocarditis. There are some general features like headache, nausea, then anorexia, weight loss, weakness, fever. So these are going to be the general signs, and these are the systemic manifestation regarding infective endocarditis.